So we've built this uh, Canvas starter application that I wanted to run through with everybody. Um, it helps us get up and running whenever we're building tools for the Canvas LMS, Learning Management System. Uh, it also, as of late, has inherited React. So we took the React Kindling project code and we brought it over into the Canvas starter application. So even in the event that we're not building an application for Canvas, uh, the React piece still makes a lot of sense whenever we need to build a React application that uses Rails on the back end. So I just wanted to show off the app and get everybody familiar with it really quickly. This is the GitHub page and I'll post it in the video notes and the learning room. The magic of it is in development.rb. So typically you would use the Rails asset pipeline to put all of your JavaScript or all of your CSS together and then serve that out to the client. The problem is, is that the Rails asset pipeline <coughs> is kind of old school in that you require one file, it takes the contents of that file and it sticks it here. You require the next file, it sticks the contents of that file here and so on and so forth. So it doesn't express the dependencies between the files. And if you were to do something like this, then all of a sudden your JavaScript would stop working. And I realize that in this trivial example, it's clear to see that you know, jQuery UJS should go after jQuery, but if this file all of a sudden had 20 or 30 or 100 different JavaScript files, which is not uncommon in a big JavaScript project, um, everything kind of breaks down and you lose the knowledge of the interdependency between the files, which is why we have things like Webpack. So can, the Canvas Starter app integrates Webpack. And if you look at, uh, we have these two Webpack files sitting in this client directory. So what we've decided to do is build all of the client side code in a root level directory called client. And this will allow us to do all of our JavaScript work in this area and then let Webpack compile that JavaScript and then dump the results of that into the Rails asset pipeline. Um, so we've got this Webpack hot right here. This thing starts up the Webpack development server and uses the React hot loader so that you get the benefits of change your React code and it, the changes will immediately show up in the page. Uh, and you can just kind of run through and see all of the different configuration options. Uh, we also have this Webpack release. So all that it does is loads up the Webpack config and then exports it. Uh, the Webpack config actually is a function that takes one parameter that indicates whether or not it's a release or dev mode and then generates the Webpack configuration accordingly. So then I can go to the command line and I can, I've set up the scripts in package.json. So you can run npm run build and that will pull up the Webpack release and build a release and then dump that into the asset pipeline. Or you can run npm uh, run hot or you can always just come and run um, node webpack.hot.js inside of the client directory and that will start up the webpack hot server. All right, so going back to where I started, this is how that all magically happens. The output of all of the um, files, the, the main entry points that are built by webpack has an extension appended. So the cool thing about webpack is very flexible Normally, we would just do something like that, where the file name is just the name of the original JSON file that was the entry point. So if your file was named main.js, after all the compilation, everything would be put into uh, one big file called main.js. However, we're going to append WP for Webpack, not, not WordPress, it always messes with my brain. It's Webpack bundle. And the reason that we're gonna do that is if I go into development.rb in my Rails project, down at the bottom, we've added this little bit of code. And it says, the asset host for any file containing WP underscore bundle is going to be localhost 8080. That way, the Rails application gets served from 
whatever port you start the Rails app on. So if I go to the command line, and I can just run Rails server, and I can give it a port, maybe run it on you know 3002 or something. So the Rails server is going to come up on 3002. Normally, your assets would also be served from that same location. However, and, and most of them still will be. You know, like your application JS that is not sent through Webpack, that's going to come off of 3002. But if I go into the client directory and I start node webpack hot.js, this will fire up. No, oh, I've got it running somewhere else. Um, let me kill this one second. Try again. Okay, so now the webpack server is listening on port 8080. What that does then is it makes it so that any of these type of assets, the URL will include this 8080. And then the webpack server will serve those files, while the Rails server will serve all the Rails files. And so all this stuff can live right next to each other happily, and we get all the benefits of using Webpack. So that's actually really cool. Um, and again, you can just look at that in development.rb if you want to see how you pull out that trick. Uh, basically anything with WP bundle is going to come off of that hot reload server. Okay, so now um, if I go into my application.html.erb, I've got these two files. So here's application.js. That's still going to load the normal um, application.js that everybody uses from the Rails asset pipeline. Uh, then we include this app WP bundle, which will um, serve up the code that we're writing here in this client directory. Uh, and here's the entry point in this app.jsx. So this, this guy um, defines everything that needs to be imported and then that gets served um, via the Webpack server. In all likelihood, we'll probably only include one or the other of these, so I would probably get rid of that one if this was my single page app that was serving up the React application. Or maybe if I'm just building kind of the Rails website, like an About Us page or a Contact Us page where we're not using React, I would pull out that file and just include the application.js because maybe on that specific page we use jQuery or something for some reason. Uh, one other thing that you have to do is in your assets.rb, be sure to add the app WP bundle to the precompile. Otherwise, Rails will not um, include that in the asset pipeline. So it'll just get ignored, and then when you go to deploy to production, everything will break and you'll, you'll wonder why. So just be sure to include the file that is built by Webpack in the assets pre-compile. All right, so um, just a really quick demonstration. No, I need to shut this down. So we use the Canvas starter app as a starting place for all of these different bits and pieces or different projects that we're building for different people. So we're building open assessments. We're updating it to uh, moving from Ember over to React and also updating it to Rails 4.2. Uh, this does not look very pretty yet because we just started working on it. We're bringing over all the CSS and whatnot. But you can see here the application is running. If I refresh this, it should load. And if I go um, look at the source code, Let's see. Sorry, one second here. Okay. Now, let me refresh the page and look at the source code. Okay. So you can see that jQuery and jQuery um, UJS has been served out of the normal asset pipeline. It's just in the assets directory, along with the application JS. That is because application JS looks like that. So there's the jQuery, there's the jQuery UJS. Here's the application HTML. You can see I've included application. Um, but you'll also notice that the app WP bundle is served off of localhost 8080, and it's valid. It can find that file. 
And that's because we've included app bundle using the standard JavaScript include tag. And then Rails figured out that that needs to be served from a different port. It took care of everything for us. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll actually we'll remove that from this file because this is meant to serve the general Chrome for the website. And then that specific JavaScript include will be used on the pages where the single page application lives that actually serves up the assessments. 